This Millie's project, however, I will say uh, I liked this a lot better. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, I liked this a lot better um, than Joiners overall. Um, if I was to compare the two, or like which one I like, I, I like. We'll probably come back to more. Um, I thought that, but however, this it's funny because I've never really been somebody that's gone through Millie's discography like that. I haven't really like listened like when he comes out with an album. I don't typically listen to it top to bottom. There's songs that I've like liked in the past of his. I've never been a huge fan of him. Um, I think this album to me though has put me on to him in ways that I didn't like uh, mm. know of him before. Like he's again, it's it's, mm. it's I've almost had the same kind of thing with Millie's that you're you've had with Joyner. Like heard the name seen the videos like heard his stuff before like you know listen to his freestyles all that stuff his new freestyle by the way with i think it was um uh i95 95 something i can't remember i gotta got look it Bars up on i95 yes that's exactly what one that's the one yes he killed that shit absolutely killed that shit oh, i'm gonna have uh, to watch that I'm really really watch that. oh so good and millie's to me um i think you know has you know not to take not to no pun intended but i think he's really evolved uh, as mm. in, as an artist, specifically oh, on this. So, that's so mean. Why would you say that? <laughs> and that's what's so sad. Oh, that's the irony of Joyner's project, right? Is this like I, I, I saw what he went for. The you evolved the kid in school thing. Mm -hmm. You grow up. It's yeah. supposed to be like, uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. a motif for the experience in 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 America. And it's also supposed to have the duality. It's really you too. This is you're the kid in this. Yeah. Like, it was just not. It, it didn't land artistically. It didn't land, and it wasn't much of an evolution for me. For yeah, him as an artist, where I was me definitely, neither. I I'm new to Millie, uh, so I'm gonna go back and listen to those other Blanco tapes because this one, really, really pretty good. So I, I do want to start though with just one uh, maybe criticism of of this album. I wouldn't even say it's necessarily a criticism, just something that I, um, that I think we've lost as as a as a not a society I should say, but as a um, like the like the the music culture where you know these twenty two track albums. I don't know about you, like I think the album experience has totally changed, and in in since you know. Like, 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 example, like a college dropout, right? That was around 20 tracks, I think like 19, if I'm not mistaken. Like, that I can listen to and play through, or I, I used to be able to, to be, able, be able to. I think maybe because now I'm not used to, like, the stamina of listening to a, the same artist for 22 tracks. I don't know if that, like, applies anymore, but I'm glad at least hmm. that he was able to give out so much content at once that people can kind of either, if they love the full thing and, and listen to it, that's great. Um... I it was a lot of tracks. It's a lot, of, a tracks. lot of tracks. That's all. That's my only thing. But if you're a fan of Millie's, I don't think you're complaining about that, right? And I do like right, Millie's. If you're a diehard fan of Millie's, for sure. Absolutely. And I think for me, there were I think there were some crazy highlights on the back end of this. Like the second half, I thought there that, that, that some of the highlights were were amazing on the back end of this. But I, I overall, like if looking at it from a perspective, I do like the first half of it a little bit better. Um, like I thought the run from. Um, just to start, like Bron Blanco Trace, I thought that was that was an amazing song, like a great way to start. I liked the the vocal sample he used, and, and that was, I think, something that I really uh, was looking at or, or listening to pretty closely as I was listening to this album was the the usage of like the again the the soulful vocal samples, the harmonies that he was playing with, the melodies. Like he mm -hmm. definitely, for me with Millie's, I think he understands the kind of beats and melodies that are like in right now and the ones that he'll get plays from. Um, and I think it's it's it's, it's pretty of a, a genius way to do it. And I and I but I think he actually executed it very well. I don't think it was one of those things where it's just like, I know that this is hot right now, so I'm just gonna bite right. off this. I think it was gen genuinely like I can go this direction with my music. I can actually sing a little bit too on some hooks and like make it like mm -hmm. harmonic and, and 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 have these these melodies that I wasn't really that I don't think he was necessarily like playing with as much before. Um, I could be wrong, but. Like that Do you song, know how old yeah. he is? Do you have any an idea I of how old he is? I don't. I think he's got to be early 30s because he's been, dude, he's been in the game for like a while. Like he hasn't really? been as big. He seems like he's a bit older. Yeah, he does seem like he's older. He's a little older, I think. I I, I don't know if he has like a, I'm trying to look it up actually, maybe if I can find it. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly how old he is. Older, older is also, obviously I say a little bit older. That's relative to he was, me. But. So he was, <laughs> he's 34, at least according 34. to this. 34, 34. Right, so he's a, he's a grown grown man. 
Yeah, and, and, and I think for him, I, I, I'm actually happy for him because I feel like this is like his best full top to bottom project. And I and I really am happy for him that he's able to. I, I kind of felt the same way about Freddie Gibbs, whereas like I liked his stuff here and there. Um, but Freddie Gibbs to me, like when Pinata, after Pinata hit, like I thought he hit the ground ridiculous. running. It was just ridiculous, Definitely. right? Definitely. But he had ridiculous. been. In and that's where I don't want to, I don't want to get too crazy, man, because Freddie Gibbs is a different breed, man. Different breed. Freddie Gibbs is nice. And not to, I'm going to just piggyback off of what you're talking about, the length of the project, right? Like even a college dropout, I know a lot of people, uh, and, and there's still a lot of stuff to back this up. A lot of people talk about this notion that people's attention span just isn't long enough for these these amount of projects and we haven't trained ourselves to listen to to long projects anymore so the best trap projects are short i think though like good music is always going to be good music if you make right. a good project of 22 songs like even if i don't finish it in one sitting if it's 22 bangers you best believe like if, if i leave on 10 i'm gonna come, come back, back on to 11, 11. and yeah. right and like and start right where i left off not exactly. just like skip around to something else but come back to 11 and then finish the other half and with like you know college dropout in my opinion had some of the best skits of all time like yes. so like it's probably yes. like more like 17 18 tracks it was definitely more of the norm back then to have an 18 track project mm -hmm. um so i understand that and that's where like if you're uh, if you're a mid-level artist, if you're an up-and-coming artist who doesn't have this buy-in, this audience that's already you know mm. bought into who you are, to want to even listen to the first song, nonetheless like twelve or eighteen of them, that's where I think you need to play your cards right, mm. um, when and adjust to this generation. Or, but it, but no matter where you are, right? Like I think. If you're an amazing artist, if you're if you're a genius artist, or whether you're just an extremely hard worker, very meticulous and very detail oriented, if you make 22 tracks that are bomb, then I'm, no one's gonna have any complaints, right? And that's what exactly. you're saying. Like, if you're a huge fan of Millie's, you probably will listen to that whole project because you really like Millie's style. You really like you really like his stuff, so you're excited to listen to the whole thing because. For you, it fills it fills up everything mm. you want, you know. And I bet there are Millie fans like that. I, I oh, don't absolutely. know if he's at a place though, where I think, you know, I'm I'm someone who's from Mass. I have heard about him for a while on Instagram, had seen a couple of music videos and singles here and there. Uh, but this was the first project that I sat down, you know, and really listened to. And if it wasn't for this podcast, looking at you know 22 tracks is daunting. And, and I'm it is not going to lie, a lot of those tracks, right, kind of blend and me melt into each other. A bit. Uh, because a bit. They're, not all of them are super distinct. Um, There's, I think with him, there were two distinct things he went for. I think he went for, like, super dark, gritty, right? And then, he and then he did that right. He, and and he, he did a good sound for that. And then on the flip side of that, though, he did, like, again, the more, like, angelic, harmonic, like, heavenly type of songs with, like, the vocal samples and the and the strings and the piano. He used it. He, like filled this album with piano whether or not it yeah. was like a dark toned pianos or more lighter toned pianos but he did such a nice job I, I mean i'm somebody that really likes piano you know as as kind of the forefront of a beat so i'm okay with that Same. um but for me this is actually an interesting two interesting things i want to comment that actually uh, just looking back as you were talking this is by far his longest project not only by track but by runtime like track mm. so he has the first two blancos blanco two was 13 tracks 36 minutes blanco the uh, original blanco was 10 tracks 29 minutes and then the oh, rest wow. of so all of them were actually really this was a 30 clip this was just like he this went, went yeah blanco three just coming out 22 Shoot. tracks full hour of, of content so again like i and then some of these tracks were singles like he had already dropped himalayas a few weeks i think before the project and then before that he had dropped the muscle um and then earlier in the year he dropped uh, rls in the past and then um the final track stay for a while was also a single as well so he did drop okay. like foot he, he had a lot of promotion for this and i think he did actually end up getting um the if within i i think i think having those songs on the album probably helped to these numbers but um he managed to get two million streams the first day on spotify alone for this album Oh damn! Yeah, so he did some numbers, man. Like he did some damn. serious numbers. Yeah, I think he did okay, it. Put some respect on that man's name. Okay. Yeah, he did okay, some numbers. Massachusetts. 
Yeah. Stand up, Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, he's really in with like Dave East and and the New York scene, like Jada Kiss. Like he, those are his boys. And, and I'm interested that you brought up New York because I want to say something about that too. But uh... no, go ahead. Absolutely. Take. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, what man? New York is clearly so influential, and that's where that's like. True. And that's why I was, I don't know if you were finishing up a point because you, you were talking no, okay. about him working with the New York artist, but that's like, that was something that I, that I heard off rip is just like, you know, like you were saying, he, he's rapping on beats that are hip. He clearly, he, 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 uh, he's clearly somewhat aware of like what the sonic landscape is in, in hip hop right now. Yes. Uh, but I, I'll say like, you know. You're aware enough to know that like New York drill drill shit is hot right now, you know right. what I mean? Like right. and and like you grab that, you grab homie Sosa Geek, and I don't know if he's with the Woo, I don't know if he's with he, he's from Pop Smoke's camp or 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 what, but he damn sure sounded like it, you know? What I, I mean? know there, there was yeah. like Pop Smoke's influence and, and that New York drills influence was like so clear. Atlantis on, uh, Frisbee on this one, those both those right. tracks are pretty dope. Right and like and they were dope tracks. They were they were pretty oh, yeah. hard and I was and I, it was hard. cool for me to be like, oh wow, there's someone from Massachusetts making this. But then you know to that same point, I'm like, there's someone from Massachusetts. You're supposed to be, you know, rapping Boston. Obviously, I look into it a lot. Like clearly, Massachusetts just n- New York kind of influence a lot of influences a lot of East Coast culture True. in general. Yes, for sure. But it's like. There, there are things that you can tap into here. There are, there are feelings. There, are, there is a certain crowd that likes a certain thing around here, and and so I, that just, for me, it wasn't a knock, but it was like, uh, all right, you're not super ambitious. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. You know what I mean? You're not trying to. You're not a like, super experimental artist by anything, by any uh, sort of the imagination. Like, and and that's where I'm like, that's where I'm like, I want to see someone, you know, create the Massachusetts style. Like you, know, I, w- well, I want to see someone. What is Massachusetts? Style? I don't even know if there's. A, we, we've like developed that yet here. You know what I mean? I right. think. I think it's it's so much of like different. I think the only group in Massachusetts that's maybe trying to formulate a more quote unquote Massachusetts sound is I think the Van Buren camp. But that's because they kind of all work together and they develop not similar sounds. I think they're all unique in their own way, right? But they yeah. certainly play off of each other and, and things like that but but here's, to, a, yeah. here's the thing that i think the massachusetts style or no matter what style it, it's not determined necessarily actually by what people around here actually listen to but who does it first and who establishes it you know what True. i mean like if, if someone if if someone became huge here for whatever unique style they had even if it doesn't reflect what everybody Everyone in else massachusetts is doing, yeah. like it becomes massachusetts style you know exactly. what i mean like yeah that's so, so bring true. something unique to the table build yourself up in that way and set the tone for at least what people could somewhat expect from massachusetts and that can also obviously help nurture other people like yes. who are trying to make music around here and give them opportunities to add their own twist. Mm-hmm. But it's like who, you know what I mean? Why listen to the guy from Boston sound like he's just from New York when I can listen to the guy from New York sound like he's I from get New that. York. I understand what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. But I, for me, like I, I was really impressed with this project overall, like just because from a standpoint of um, just how – cohesive it sounded yet with even with the contrast i think i think the like the use of his piano um styled production i think worked to his favor i think there were like some deep cut deep like emotional cuts on this like i thought rls rain and dead homies calling just to name a few like they just had these nice like beautiful hooks and like uh you know they were emotional lyricism talking about you know so many different things like drug addiction um talking about you know, mental health, talking about just kind of like, you know, I, I know as a per like he had a really tough upbringing, like especially in school, like he was, you know, he had, str- he struggled in school and, um, you know, to actually like stay, you know, um, stay, stay in school and things like that. I know he, he's, mm-hmm. he's been through a lot in his life and he, he seems, he's very real. He's very honest. And I just, I, I like his authenticity. I think that, um, like like I, I mean, you you could probably look at him and make a quick judgment be like oh he's gimmicky and blah blah he's trying to play but i think that really truly is him and i, I think people that definitely are fans of him and have known him long enough in this in the, in the rap game understand that this this is who he is right so if, like definitely. i think that for me i really enjoyed 
that more or less than yeah. anything from him and and they were just again and then and then the songs that banged i mean they banged i mean i loved uh um the two tracks you mentioned with sosa geek i thought heightened senses as well was really great with Jim Jones. Whatever the one with uh, D the Flyest, I don't he, know. Yeah, uh, D the Flyest is actually a Boston guy, and um, that that, that he, track he, was dope. He went off that that fat that fat flea one that that was hard. That was hard. Oh oh, also man, big respect. And, and I don't know, I don't know, Millie. Obviously, let me do some uh, deductive reasoning. Like he's probably has a lot of connections to New York, and that's why he feels. Uh, you know, like he can do the New York style while also being from Boston. Uh, because you roll out that Jim Jones feature in the first that's three tracks, crazy. and like that was just even if it's just for the sake of fanfare, like like ooh, like showing your audience that you have Jim Jones. I was impressed, and Jim yeah. did some good rapping. Jim's just been rapping his ass off like these past like I feel like four years. Jim Jones has been trying to like you know it hasn't been trying, but he's been doing this revival yeah. kind of like second wave of his career as like you know one of the elder statesmen but like that was fire it was it was, was a good dope. track and uh, yeah n- none of what i'm saying before although it might have sounded critical uh was to say that i didn't enjoy this project at all because I, I did enjoy this project a good amount and i'm gonna come back he definitely has mm. after listening to this now he's definitely got me he's on my radar now now i'm gonna listen to whatever he drops later because he, he's doing some good rapping you know what i mean and yeah he his his delivery is smooth he was getting melodic for sure um uh i i, I uh and i think on me listening to this you know on the back end of me finishing Jonah lucas's project kind of made me maybe even like it more because mm-hmm. uh there was there were there were things that like maybe the subject matter wasn't specifically unique but like there were things that i was taking away from what i was listening to where he was painting his his unique experience exactly uh you know what i mean he was he was definitely sounding authentic to what he's seen exactly i was like okay so now i'm getting a good feel for the kind of guy you are and you're saying it you know what i mean at the end of the day it's like if i believe you to say it so i believed him and usually that's Mm. because people are speaking from an honest place if you can get it to believe them but this is where i'm saying like if joiner did some of, some of this like if joiner even did some of this but i understand he doesn't want to be fake but like even if you did do this some of this in this way you could probably get me to believe you because you're also such a good rapper where i'm like looking for joiner to paint some kind of personal narrative that's unique to him you know what i yeah. mean like that's, yeah i, I see that's what you're saying. not super surface where like even in this off off the rap off the off the rip uh with this blanco project you know it was it was a new york sounding like drill project but also some grimy like dark i guess trappy but like almost dark boom bappy like you know lyric cuts and it was like specific things that were like just painting a unique picture as to who this artist is not like just the story they're saying at the time but like who this artist is yeah this was a super good representation of him i think and and i think it painted the picture like you're saying of of him as a person um you he said it with conviction that you felt like it came from a place that was meaningful and passionate so yeah i i love this project i think it's i think for me uh, having listened to him and, and listened to some of his albums in the past, this is—I haven't listened to every single one of his projects th- straight through. The ones I have listened to, however, this is probably my favorite one. Uh, they're definitely, again, like I mentioned them a, f- a few before, but so many songs I'll come back to on this. Like I've been—I've uh, been bumping re- uh, RLS Real Life shit for quite a while uh, as, a, as, a, as a, it was a single. A Dead Homies Calling I thought was so good, and like that Interstate track was was hard as hell. The there's def- there's track was hard. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention real quick before we before we move on to the last segment of the show, uh, of, of, of today's episode, the song Outcasts, actually I thought as well, took a mm. sample of Elevators, Me and You from Outcast, and it, it, instrumentally go back and listen to both like side by mm-hmm. side. There's definitely like a he used the same type of um, BPM or some same type of um, yeah. That, you're like, probably not hi-hat. reaching on that, right? It's, I don't it's think so. Outcast for yeah, you're probably not reaching. <laughs> and I didn't and I, I didn't think of, and I didn't even think that it would happen that way because I listened to the um, I actually it's funny I listened to this one first and I didn't I didn't think of it beforehand and I was just like and I heard the beat and I was like wait a second this sounds so much like me and you mm-hmm. elevators and I was just like. Oh my! And then I looked back and I was like, okay, I don't know if he like it was an intentional thing or not. Like the same thing with Joiner, right. I don't know if it was an intentional thing, but 
I heard it. I'm just a big outcast guy, as you can see. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, anytime I hear it, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, right, right, but right. overall, man, yeah, this this was a really, really I think strong project from Millie's, and and I mean, clearly people enjoying it. Cause he's getting a ton of rave reviews and 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 uh, streams from this. So I, yeah, I'm I'm big, big fan of this project and Millie's. Big so up big, to him, man. Want to see him? I want to see him work. Want to see him yeah, win? Yeah, me too. Shout, shout out to both these guys repping Massachusetts in the way they do, especially and 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 doing doing their thing. I think uh, you know, and Millie's does come on a, a ton of um, podcasts. Hopefully, he comes on this one someday, but. Uh, He's gone on. He's gone on a lot of podcasts uh, in Massachusetts and told his story and and talks so much about how you know, yeah, uh, you know he, he still reps Massachusetts and, and and what he you know what he wants to bring to the to the table. What he wants to see potentially come out of the scene and things like that. So he's someone that's well connected and I think just a, a good, uh, just good person. He sounds seems like very authentic. So big shout out to Millie's and uh, and Joiner for for their projects. And like I said, this is just our opinions, guys, on these albums. So let us know what you think in uh, in the comments section. Let us know uh, if you enjoyed these albums right. and what were your if favorite I, if songs. If I'm off, man, tell me. Man, if I'm off, if I'm off about joiners, man, someone please point me <laughs> to, to where they can ch- help me change my mind. Because, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like them. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, but, I'm with you. I liked the Millie's album definitely better than the Joiner album. I did. There's I did. more. There's I more, hate yeah. to have to pin the people from Massachusetts together, but we're just happy we're to doing be talking it, about so. two of them. Yeah. But, yeah. like, uh, yeah. Yeah. 